Hello, how are you doing? I hope you're having a good day. I'm Dr. Adelzo. I'm a diabetes and lifestyle coach helping you to live longer and better. I got a message a little while ago asking, why is it that nobody talks about type 1 diabetes? Is it that it doesn't exist anymore? And I can understand that sentiment because, especially in this environment, we talk a lot more about type 2 diabetes than we do about type 1. So generally speaking, there are three main types of diabetes. Type 1 diabetes, type 2 diabetes, and gestational diabetes. In some places, type 2 diabetes can account for up to 95% of the cases of diabetes. So that's why you tend to hear a lot more about it than you do type 1. Now the pancreas is an organ that sits very close to the stomach and it produces insulin. The cells that produce insulin in the pancreas are called islet cells. Uh, insulin is a chemical messenger. It travels around the body telling cells what to do. Now, one of the messages is, it carries is to tell the cells to open up and take sugar out of the blood. Now your immune system is that system that protects you against foreign invaders in the form of organisms like bacteria, viruses, and also cancer cells, and it kills them. In type 1 diabetes, the immune system starts to see the islet cells that produce insulin as being foreign. So it starts to attack them and kill them off. So this is what is known as an autoimmune response. That's auto against the body immune you're fighting so the body is fighting against itself instead of fighting against something that's foreign gradually as the islet cells are killed off naturally the production of insulin will continue to go down until at a point when almost all the cells are gone you'll find that there is virtually no insulin left in circulation so type 1 diabetes is a chronic autoimmune condition in which there is little or no insulin leading to high blood sugar. Now if you compare this to type 2 diabetes the situation is quite different. In type 2 diabetes especially in the initial stage there is lots of insulin. The islet cells are working overtime producing insulin and pushing it out into the body trying to get the blood sugar to come down. The problem here is not that there isn't enough insulin. The problem is that the target, the cells that are supposed to open up and take the sugar out of the blood in response to this insulin are not responding. So this is known as insulin resistance. So type 2 diabetes is a state of insulin resistance. There's lots of insulin, but the insulin is not doing its job. So what causes type 1 diabetes? We're not really sure why the body turns on itself like that. There is a genetic component in that if you have a mother or father, a brother or sister who has type 1 diabetes, you are more likely to get type 1 diabetes. But it's not 100%, you know, you can have that genetic uh, predisposition, but still not develop the disease. Then there's the theory that maybe that it's a viral infection that kind of triggers this immune response that causes the immune system to start attacking the islet cells. Now, with type 2 diabetes, there is a genetic component again, but as with type 1 diabetes, just because that predisposition is there, just because that tendency is there, does not necessarily mean that you are going to develop type 2 diabetes. A lot of that hinges on your lifestyle. So if you eat a lot of rubbish, if you don't move around, if you are really stressed out and you know don't sleep and all that, then your chances of actually developing type 2 diabetes because you have that predisposition is very high. Another issue is that even if you don't have the, um, that genetic trait in you, you can still develop type 2 diabetes as a result of your lifestyle habits. Type 1 diabetes used to be called insulin dependent diabetes. It also used to be called juvenile diabetes. That's because 
it tends to occur more in children and young adults. This is in sharp contrast to type 2 diabetes, which occurs more in older adults, 40 years and above. But you can find type 1 diabetes and type 2 diabetes occurring at virtually any age. Now the signs and symptoms of type 1 and type 2 diabetes are very similar because the end point is kind of the same, you know, high blood sugar. You'll find that both of them, there'll be um, excessive thirst, extreme hunger, frequent urination. In type 1 diabetes, which will occur more in the younger age group, you may find that a child who has previously been able to get through the night without wetting the bed, suddenly starts wetting the bed again. There may be um, sudden weight loss, blurred vision, extreme tiredness and fatigue. So all those are common to both conditions. And the complications likewise are very similar. Increased risk of stroke, blindness, heart disease, um, disease of the blood vessels, problems with the kidneys, increased tendency towards amputations of the foot. All those things are common to both conditions. In pregnancy, there may be miscarriages, genetic defects in the baby, very high blood pressure in the mother with blindness and um, convulsions. Now, there's no cure for diabetes, and I'm going to qualify that statement. In type 1 diabetes, there is no insulin, or very little insulin or no insulin at all, which means that if you are a type 1 diabetic, you must take insulin to stay alive. There's no two ways about it is not debatable. You don't have insulin, you have to inject insulin. Now, in type 2 diabetes, like we said, it's a lifestyle disease. So lifestyle change can make a difference. And there are several ways in which it can do this. First of all, if you're about to be put on medication, lifestyle change can actually help you to bring down that blood sugar so that you don't need to take the drugs, that's first. Second, if you're on drugs, you may actually be able to come off all your drugs by changing your lifestyle. And third, if you're on drugs, you may be able to remove some of those drugs and or reduce the dosage of the drugs that you're on. Now with type one diabetes, you can make lifestyle changes that can improve your quality of life. Granted, you have to take insulin, but by making some changes, you can actually reduce the amount of insulin that you need to take. That's first of all. Then second, lifestyle change can actually help you to regulate your blood sugar a little bit more so that you don't have those peaks and valleys. Your blood sugar isn't swinging up and down all the time so that the fluctuations are a little bit more gentle and that will definitely improve your quality of life. But like I said, there's no such thing as coming off your insulin. Now in type 2 diabetes, there are several groups of drugs that are used in treatment, ranging from metformin all the way up to eventually insulin for some people who are not getting a good response with the oral medication. That's the medication that's taken by mouth. So there's a whole range of drugs that are used to treat type 2 diabetes. But type 1 diabetes, the primary treatment is insulin. Something like metformin may be added to help to improve the body's response to the insulin that's being injected. But the insulin is the base. So please don't be deceived by magic cures and potions and uh, in particular the ever-present stem cells that are supposed to be a cure for every ailment known to man. Please, just avoid all those things. They are a total waste of money at best and at worst they are offering people false hope. Leave those things and focus on, particularly if you're type 1 diabetic, yes I know, it's unfortunate. There's nothing you can do. You must take your insulin but just try and focus on the positive things. Try and focus on living the healthiest life that you can within the resources that you have available to you. Forget all those fantastical cures. They're just a waste of time and money. So please share this video with your family and friends. As usual, don't forget to like the video and subscribe underneath. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.